Hi, it's Miss Anna here with our weekly church school lesson for St. Peter's by the Sea. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well. Today is actually kind of our kickoff for our fall season. Um, I am looking forward to starting this new school year, even though it looks really different. Um, I'm excited that it means new ways to connect with all of you guys. Um, and I hope that you guys are having an okay time transitioning to the start of a new school year that looks really different um, than any other school year we've been through. Um, um, our lesson today is about families. And we're all spending a little bit more time um, with our families than we normally do. Um, and so I'm wondering um, if any of you guys have cis siblings, um, any brothers or sisters maybe? Or if you don't have brothers or sisters, maybe you have cousins that you're really close to um, or some friends that are kind of like family. Um, I think of those people that are kind of close in your life that you love a lot, but maybe also kind of annoy you a little bit um, and we kind of give you a hard time, but no matter what, you still love them. So I was going to show you guys here this picture, so you guys can see. That right there, that is me and my sister. So this is me right here. And this is my sister, Mary. She is uh, um, three years younger than I am. And so this is us when we were obviously a lot younger. Um, and when we were growing up, you know, we loved each other a lot. We played together a lot, but we also bothered each other a lot and got angry with one another and had to figure out a lot of things um, between, between us because we shared a room and we would fight about things. And our Bible story today is about a bunch of brothers. And so I want you guys to imagine the worst thing that you think your brother or sister or your cousin or best friend maybe has done to you that made you really mad. And I can guarantee you that Joseph's brothers and Joseph, something worse happened between them. There were 12 of them, these brothers. And um, they didn't get along very well. And um, it was so bad. Joseph was one of the youngest brothers and um, and his older brothers did not like the way he kind of acted like he knew a lot more than them. Um, and they got so mad at him once, they threw him all the way down a well and um, we're gonna leave him there. And then they just said, okay, we won't do that. They sold him to some people that were coming by to get rid of him and then told their dad that he was dead. So that is a pretty bad thing to do to a brother or sister. And so if you can imagine how hurt Joseph must have been that his brothers had treated him that way. And our story today comes a little bit later. Cause so what happened is Joseph left with these people that he was sold to and um, he ended up kind of working his way up and ended up working for Pharaoh, who was like a king. And he was put in charge of a lot of things in the country and ended up doing a lot of things to save a lot of people because he interpreted some dreams and he knew that there was a big famine coming. A famine is a time when there is not enough water and so there is not enough food going to be there for all the people. But because Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream, they planned for this famine and they saved up food. And so when the famine came, they were gonna be okay. They'd saved enough food to save a lot of people. And that's where our story um, begins today. In the book of Genesis, I'm going to read what happens um, when Joseph was in charge of um, all this food and Joseph's brothers um, traveled to where he was because they needed food because of the famine. So we're um, start here in, um, in the book of Genesis, okay? And it's Joseph helps his family. God always watched over Joseph. God spoke to Joseph in dreams, and Joseph used this knowledge to plan ahead. When the famine came, people from all over came to find food for their families because they heard that Joseph had saved for seven years. Even Joseph's brothers traveled to Egypt to find food. But it had been such a long time since they'd seen each other, the brothers didn't recognize Joseph. Joseph kept the secret of who he was from his brothers for a while, but soon he couldn't wait any longer. Joseph finally told them who he was. I am your brother, Joseph, who you sold to the Egyptian traders. 
Don't feel bad anymore because God sent me ahead of you so that I could save people, including you. This famine is going to last for many years. So hurry back to our father and tell him that I am safe. I want you to bring your families and your children and all of your sheep and goats to live near me. Once Joseph's brothers saw who he was, they all hugged each other and cried. They jumped up and down with relief and joy. Joseph and his brothers talked and talked. The brothers talked from the time the sun came up to this time the sun went down. And when the Pharaoh heard that Joseph's brothers had come, he said to Joseph, tell them to get everyone in your family. I will give them the best land in Egypt and call their own. Joseph gave his brothers wagons and food and new clothes, and they went back to their father and told him the good news. Joseph is still alive. He is the ruler of all of Egypt. Everyone danced when they heard the news. This is all I could have asked for, Joseph's father said. Now I will see my son again. Let's get moving. Joseph's family all moved to Egypt, but the brothers were worried. What if Joseph is still angry at us? We were so awful to him. What can we do? The brothers went to Joseph and said, here we are. We don't deserve to be your brothers anymore. We want to be your servants. But Joseph said to them, don't be silly. I am your brother no matter what. Even though you planned for something bad to happen to me, God turned it in to something good. And so that's one of the things we're taking away from our lesson today, is that a lot of bad things happen. And sometimes we do bad, awful things to each other. But God can use even the bad things to make good things happen. I don't think God wants bad things to happen to us. God loves us so much. But what Jesus has shown us is that Jesus can redeem things. That means taking things that are broken or bad or hard and take good things from them. Take the things that we think are unsavable and save them. Um, so next time, maybe, uh, when your brothers or your sisters, or your friends or cousins, um, are giving you a hard time or you guys are having a hard time getting along, maybe you can think about the way that God loves you and God loves them. And you guys can find a way to find the good in the hard things that are happening. I will see you guys soon. Bye.